Hey guys, Aaron Garza. Welcome to Pure Line Nutrition Supplement Spotlight of the Week. We're going to do something a little different this week. Uh, we've been going through products over the last several months, going through different things that can help you achieve your goals faster when it comes to losing weight, building muscle, burning body fat. Um, so we've decided to go ahead and take some questions from you guys out there and start to give you a little bit more information to help you utilize those products correctly and just take some general questions out there that you may have about any other subject that hopefully we can enlighten you about. So um, whoever sends in a question to info at thepureline.com and gets that question answered on video uh, will be sent free of charge, of course, one of our Pure Line caps or a Pure Line t-shirt or a Pure Line really nifty cool cyclone cup. So all those are right here waiting. And let's take a look at our first question that we had for this segment. Um, we've got about three to go over. So let me kind of take them here and see what we've got. Now, segment one. Okay, number one, do I need, this is from John in Lakeville, Minnesota. He says, do I need to PCT off SARMs? It's a good question, John. And the reason that's a good question is because SARMs don't typically impact testosterone levels. They don't impact your overall testosterone production. What we've seen the research tell us is that they have a very, very, very marginally small impact overall on testosterone production. So SARMs don't necessarily need a PCT, but I am gonna say that it is a good practice to PCT after a SARM. It's not a bad idea. Uh, and the only reason is it's only gonna elevate your natural testosterone levels re-bolster your ability to hold on to the muscle tissue that you've gained while on a SARM cycle. So I would definitely consider it a good practice to PCT after a SARM, although the research tells us that your post-cycle therapy is not really important because it doesn't negatively affect testosterone, um, SARMs that is, and they don't really bring testosterone levels down too much. But again, I think it's just a good idea to always try to increase natural testosterone levels when you have the opportunity. So I'm gonna say yes, go ahead and you know do that when you definitely come off of a SARM, especially one like Anabol or Oxygen, one of the heavier uh, utilized SARMs that do a lot more um, anabolic type work in the body and help promote protein synthesis and lean mass gains. Okay, so number two, <clears throat> do I need to take a break from my Diva Burn pre-workout? That comes from Cindy in Clovis, New Mexico. It's a good question, Cindy. Um, thanks for your question. And you know, the Diva Burn product that uh, we manufacture is not a very strong stimulant based product. It's really cool because it has a little bit of CLA. Um, it's got a small bit of green tea. It's got a little bit of guarana. It's gonna help get you going. It definitely has a nice pickup. In fact, I mean, this is crazy, but I actually use that product even though it's a female specific formula, just because I'm really kind of sensitive to stimulants and I can take about a fourth to a half a scoop of Diva Burn. It works really well for me. Now the question is, should I take a break from it? Like anything, I think it's a good idea to take some time off from your pre-workout um, reason being number one your body tends to get used to things after you take them for a certain period of time and the other thing is anytime you're taking something with caffeine in it you want to take some time off just to let your body detox from that caffeine and get back to normal um, stressing the adrenal glands can be one reason that a lot of people stop taking pre-workouts for a while as well so those are all good reasons not to use a pre-workout you know for a long period of time give yourself you know four to six weeks off um, and then four to six weeks on. Just same time on, same time off. Um, when you really need a pre-workout for those hard training work days like legs and back, uh, things like that, then go ahead and take a scoop. But you know, try not to make it a regular thing that you do all the time. So I hope that answers your question, Cindy. Now, question number three, if I'm trying to burn body fat, what's the best type of training for me to do? And that comes from Lori in Tallahassee, Florida. It's a good question, Lori, and you know, it's really tough to answer that question because a lot of people out there think that just simply doing cardio is gonna burn body fat, and, and that's so untrue because if you look at the typical physique or the body of a jogger or a cyclist, for example, a, a lot of these people, even though they're extremely thin, they don't carry a lot of muscle and they still have a fairly high percentage of body fat. And the reason that is is because they're not doing any resistance training. Resistance training is fundamentally the most important thing that you can do to help you burn body fat because the fat loss continues 
long after the workout has been completed. So if you're working out for an hour with resistance training, your muscle is recovering for 24 hours to 48 hours and calories are being burned. When you're doing cardio like a step or a jogging uh, or going jogging or cycling, you're burning calories only in that period of time. Now the caveat to that is if you do some high intensity interval training like um, um, sprinting or uh, using a cycle, uh, using a bike and you go really hard for a minute and then go at a moderate pace for two minutes and really hard for a minute. What happens with that um, is something called EPOC, which is uh, post-exercise oxygen consumption. Basically, you continue to use oxygen and continue to burn calories throughout the next six to 10 hours. So that's you know one of the things that is a benefit of doing some HIIT training. So I guess if you had to boil it down for the best fat loss, I would do a combination of resistance with maybe some HIIT training cardio after, and that would do the best. Of course, none of that works without a good diet, um, a structured diet in which you're fundamentally dropping calories every few weeks and helping your body eliminate, eliminate some of that body fat. So I hope that really uh, helps you out there, Lori. Now vascularity, Addie from Milwaukee writes about vascularity. What is vascularity? How do I improve it? That's, that's, a, <laughs> that's an interesting question. You Some people tend to have um, naturally vascular arms and, and vascular body parts and you can see the veins on their body and a lot of that is just the result of being in extremely low body fat levels the more lean you get the less body fat you carry the more evident the muscle is going to be and the vascularity is going to improve as well it also has a lot to do with the water um, the amount of water in the bloodstream and the blood vessels and the more water you have the increased vascularity comes from that too a lot of people will use arginine and nitric oxide releasing agents to help improve the amount of blood and the amount of blood flow through the vascular system to improve vascularity but in general the general idea is that vascularity is a result of low body fat so the lower you bring that body fat down the better the vascularity you're gonna have so thank you Addy for your question we'll be sure and send you guys out either a hat a t-shirt or one of our cyclone cup bottles here in the next uh, few days. So, hey guys, thanks for your questions. If you have any questions, email them to info at thepureline.com. If we pick them, we'll send you a gift. And follow us on Instagram at Pureline Nutrition, as well as Facebook at Pureline Nutrition. Thank you guys. Take care and we'll see you soon.